Tfue and Canton are already into their match, so we are going to switch over here first to Canton versus Tfue in top four once again. This is a best of three match, so we're going to watch game one. This one. Yes. I'm excited too. We start off with a turn one sudden flash, exactly what we want to see here. Tfue, meanwhile, simply opens with a Snorunt, a Steven that still doesn't draw any basic Pokemon and results in needing to just use a Powder Snow. So, Hanton, I guess there is a world where they can win the game right now. Not anymore with that Psychic Energy. So, that's okay. I think if you're Canton, you are pretty satisfied with how this opening turn has gone for you. Okay, now looking over onto Tfue's side, they do get the second Snorunt. Copycat here to reset the hand, and still no, not, nothing here. No Oddish, no Swa. What's it called? The Mudkip, <laughs> no Glalie. Instead, this goes for another sleep. So once again, this Dunsparce not able to attack. And we're right back to Canton. You know, I've said a lot of things uh, pro Dunsparce, and I stand by them. But I will say, you can't put to sleep a dual ball. <laughs> wow. Talk about Canton flipping toins. I think that's three or four tails in a row. But... Yeah, oh, by the way, Canton attaches the multi-energy. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, Glalie is this is this rogue deck. Not many people have seen it before today, the secret deck. I wonder if Canton is aware that attaching the multi-energy will make their damage be a lot lower. You know, if I had, if I had to guess, I think that maybe Canton isn't familiar with Glalie. Maybe he is. I mean, he's a, he's a pretty noted... Um, Noted at uh, 04, or just noted retro grinder in general. But even if not, I bet he had an opportunity to say, hey, there's a Glalie in top eight. Let me read that card real quick. Yeah, hopefully they did get a chance to see what the card does. I mean, it, and, and this is the thing with these Gorbis decks, is that if you want to attack into Glalie with Gorbis, you have to use special energy. Now, I do see a world in the future where Gorbis decks can relatively easily put basic waters in in order to account for that, but I don't think anybody was playing basic water in their Gorbis decks today. No, I, I can't imagine that anyone is. I think that Canton is just going to say, you know what, we're, we're going to be using Gardevoir and Blossom here, so I'll get the energy down on, on, on Gorbis anyway, you know, in case something else comes active so I can just Mystic Water it, but I'm going to be focusing on this Gardevoir, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. And unfortunately, Tfue still does not have enough energy to start attacking. So they did get the Steven. Hopefully that will help their board get going. Or more, more Tails today. It's the second time in, in a row, in the last like five or so minutes, that I've seen double dual ball go Tails, 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 Heads. And we had, we had that exact same situation out of our X Blood player last game. Right now, here's the Mudkip. Yeah, that's the nature of the beast for you. And I like, I like, I like spreading out the energy. No sense of putting a third energy on that Glalie when it could get energy bursted before it even attacks. So spread, mm -hmm. spread them out. Get that backup ready. But now the ball is in Canton's court. I mean, that that side shadow could really start building up. And the nice thing is, every turn that Canton gets that pressure is a potentially a turn to set to manually attach a basic psychic to the guard bar, get that extra damage without placing damage counters. Yeah, I, I'm imagining a world where you do energy burst for 80 damage. You would only need five energy on the guard of war, assuming the Glalie has three energy. So the longer it takes for Tifu to start pressuring this board, the greater the chance Canton has to be able to take out a Glalie, and already Canton is halfway there. Of course, you know, I, I say that, but Canton does have the Blossom. So we saw a Psy Shadow and an immediate heal. So I think that Gardevoir could be attacking as soon as next turn, and I think when it attacks, it's going to have zero damage counters on it. 
So that, 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 that Gardevoir can easily take out two Glalie back to back. Oh, yeah. That's a really good point. So, oh, Heavy Blizzard heavy heads Blizzard again. Pads. That Not damage good. will start to rack up. These Gorbis will start to be within range after just a couple heads. I wonder, are we going to see? Are we going to see uh, a an energy burst this turn now? Yes, I think we are. Probably going to heal down to ten, and then and then knock out the Glalie right away. Yeah, this is not what you want to see if you're Tfue. This is really tough to come back from. It's certainly scary. I mean, just all that damage and the healing for Blossom is is a, a, a scary combination. And another guard who are re ready to go. So I have to say it's advantage Canton here. Yeah, I think I think that Tfue's best response to this Gardevoir is actually their own ditto in order to pull off another energy burst to do massive damage in return, but we don't see a ditto, and, and I think we would need a Swampert in order to accelerate the energy, so I definitely agree. I think Cannon has the advantage. Tfue's board is leaving a little bit to be desired, and this Glalie's going oh, down. Heavy Blizzard Tails. I didn't know it could flip Tails. Yeah, that's actually really big, too. You want to build up the really damage big. on those Gorobus and that Gardevoir as well on the bench. And it just means that the, the Gardevoir can comfortably, comfortably be healed off by the Velocim, and now there's no world, um, I guess, short of a ditto, there's no world without Gardevoir being knocked out. I agree. Swampert, Swampert could knock it out, but there's no way it could get to 4 energy to use the Hypnosplash. Hypnosplash does 50 damage. Oh, you're right, it does. What does 60 damage, then? I don't even know. Nothing in Tfue's deck other than a ditto, but it's just a pass. Uh oh. Uh, not where you want to be. That's more energy drops, more healing. More healing, more I think, is the biggest part. Burst. Yeah, I think Blossom has been the MVP of Anton's deck. This, yeah, Blossom has been has been a, a big contributor to this whole tournament. Yeah, it saved Tfue last round too in top eight. Oh my goodness. That yeah. Corvus waiting in the wings. One shots the Swamper. Huge Mystic Water. 120 damage. And now it's just a sad snow run. And Kara, you know what the best part is? 120 damage minus 40 is 80. Oh. Ah, well. Didn't have to come to that. Yep. Down goes TFU in game one. All right. Canton with a pretty decisive game there. I think that's exactly what you want to see if you're Gardibus. Just keep attacking with your Gardevoir and just do that again. That was great. Hopefully, for Canton's sake, that they can do it again in Game 2. And if you're Tfue, you're really wanting to get your board set up a bit faster and get that Blossom online. Game 2 is now underway. So the players are getting shuffled up. So as, as we set up, one thing that you may have noticed... Because of the nature of TCG1, it is actually not possible for a losing player to determine whether they go first or second. TCG1 automatically chooses who goes first without any input from the players. So one odd thing about this site is that in best of threes, it's random who goes first or second. And yeah, in this all case... All these players know that. They signed up for it. Yeah, at this point, folks that are playing on TCG1 for these tournaments are pretty pretty entrenched into... This website, we're pretty enfranchised. We yeah, love this I've place. Been playing, I've been on TCG One. I mean, for like nine or ten years. Yeah, it, this this website has been so important to not only the preservation of retro and the growth of interest, but especially two thousand four as a format. I feel like this format is the most entwined with TCG One. For a long time, it was basically the only retro format that you could play on here. So it, it's great it was, that we still get to be it, here. You could just play the the Watts era formats and 2004. So I know back in the day, I played a whole lot of 04 on here. Yeah, for, for those who weren't around, we only got the EX era, like 2005, 2006, RSPK. We only got those cards in like 2020 on this website. 
it was a very long time before we actually got anything other than 04 for the Nintendo. And and much more modern stuff like like the 2013, you know, black and white on. That's that sort of stuff. Yes. We had a we had a big gap for most of Gens 3 and 4. Okay, so let's 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 look at this game for a minute. Uh, we have a fast Gorbis and a damaged Swampert. Not what you want to see. Yeah, Tfue, once again, their dual ball only got one heads, and they opted for the Snorunt, which makes sense, but you really would have loved two. Underground Expedition, ugh. Now, okay, this Glalie's going to wall a lot of damage in the meantime, which is great. Yeah, um, I think it's going to wall 40 of the possible 50 damage that we're staring down, is my math right? My math I agrees with your right. math. I think... I think we're looking at Mystic Water for 10 on the play. Okay, 20. But still, not uh, <laughs> not the damage that Gorbis is known for. This is why we play uh, Glalie. Heavy ah. Blizzard. Flipping heads, obviously. Steven's advice only for two. Gets a double Clam Pearl. See, here's the other thing. Heavy Blizzard puts damage counters. So those Exoskeletons are not stopping the Blizzard. Oh, goodness, that is so true. Exoskeleton who? You're too cold for that. <laughs> yeah, wh what I love about this Glalie deck is that even though Tfue's board seemed pretty slow, it looked like they didn't have much going on, Ice Wall blocking so much damage gives Tfue a lot of time. And that is time that they can use to not only just knock out these fish, but to also establish more attackers and get that Blossom going. Now, I see an active Ralts. Kara? Kara? Oh, a confused Ralts! Oh! Darn. Oh, no. We were so we close. so close! <laughs> I thought we were, I thought confusion was off the table, and in comes Canton trying to, trying to make the, the miracle happen, but gets punished for that. Down goes the Ralts. <laughs> but... That was 10 extra damage on the Glalie. Yeah, and also the Heavy Blizzard Tails is significant here, especially with... Well, okay, actually, a Canton Blossom isn't saving the Gorbis, but it will oh. resist the Glalie. Okay, oh, well... Please. Miracle Powder. I know Paralysis is tempting. Please. Please. Heads? Oh. Uh, poison. Okay. Okay. I respect it. Yeah. I like they're, the poison. They're, they're, they're mapping. I, I, I like it. Now, a couple observations. First of all, Canton has no cards in hand. So that's something to keep in mind. But also, um, I think for a water deck, you would be worried about them having an island cave. However, this Glalie deck does really love its desert ruins. So there actually is less of a possibility of this deck playing Island Cave than perhaps a oh. deck that played EX Pokemon. Steven's advice off the top. That's Three ridiculous. Not the most impressive Steven's advice in the world, but you know what? Three cards is better than none. Yeah, top decking Steven off a hand to zero is, is why these players are in the top four. Miracle Powder for 10 damage. We, we, are, we are playing slow Pokemon today. Yeah. Can, can we can we talk about this this board? I see five total energy on a benched Gorbis. Yeah, so the Gorbis is holding a double rainbow, and the multi it was holding is turned off. Now, that doesn't do anything to Ice Wall. All it does is actually reduce the Mystic Water calculation. As we see, Tfue get the double dual ball. So finally, on turn seven of the game, getting the board they actually want. There's that ditto. And a copy cat. <laughs> Love the supporters in this format. I really, you know, you're a Steven's advice enjoyer. I'm a copycat enjoyer. That's one of my favorite supporters ever printed. Copycat for a massive hand size is another one of the defining characteristics of this format, and I also love it. Also, can we talk about the fact that Canton top decks Steven off a hand of zero, top decks copycat with a one card hand? I, that, I'm speechless. Skill difference. Miracle powder, and what's it going to be? More poison. Okay, so Tfue 
plays a war point. Wow. Okay, so if you're Canton, I think you gotta save the Ralts. Yeah, I think one of those one of those uh zero Oh nope. They are Canton all in on Velossum. You know, I wonder if Canton's just, just saying, you know what, I am going to I'm going to set up a truly enormous Corvus and just punch right through the ice wall. We saw that strategy last game. True. Well, now Innervating Pollen is online, so stalling with Blossom is going to be less effective than it was before. Not entirely ineffective, but let's see. Let's do the math real quick, Kara. 1, 2, we're, 3, we're 4, 5, close. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep, I count 10. Yeah, that's enough, actually. Right? 10 minus 40 is 60. 60 yep. plus 40 is 100, so Canton that has knockout. Enough. That'll knock out two Glalie. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. If the Gla if the Gorbis loses the its own energy, the Blossom also could go down. That's true. I don't know what Tfue's Gloom count is. I don't know if they can afford to evolve the Gloom. It it's funny, you know. Talk about Glalie. So Glalie, it's a water Pokemon that does fifty damage. Historically, that's what Walrein did, and Walrein was good until people realized that it gets walled by Blossom. However, as the format has progressed, people have played Blossom less and less, which has given a deck like Walrein more of an opening, or something like Glalie to actually have more action against Blossom. Or sorry, yeah, against the meta, but Blossom once again has a chance to just wall you out. It's an interesting back and forth of this metagame that I love so much. You know, I wonder, this is me thinking way far ahead, but I wonder if um, if there's a world where Walrein players should consider running Velocim themselves. With Walrein's big HP and the ability to use that Gloom to weaken other Velocim. Um. Yeah, so tell you what, Kara, I need to end the stream because I need to go build that deck right now and play it on TCG1 in 10 seconds. So understandable. I, I think we gotta call it here. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you had fun. Yeah, it's uh, been a good stream, everybody. Yeah, I, I need to go play some 04. This is too much for me. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what though, doing these broadcasts only makes you want to play this format even more. I, I love this format. You know, I have to be honest, I've got victory bell on the brain right now, but I gotta say, this is this has ignited a, a bit of an O4 fire in my heart. Yeah, if if you're if you're watching this broadcast and this doesn't want to make you play O4, you should still do it anyway. All right, it's big bad Mystic Water for eighty damage, blowing up a Glalie. In comes Ditto, probably gonna take out that Gorbis. We are throwing uh, one shots back and forth now. Yeah, this is. The, pri the prize count is even. I am a little worried for Tfue, but if they have a water two water energy, they can water call and then attach return, and that'll take a lot of energy off of Anta's board. Wow, this is crazy. I, I, I really didn't expect a game where the, the Gorbis player is just using Gorbis to beat Glalie. It really seemed yeah, like I, you would have to avoid using Gorbis. I thought it was Gardevoir, but Anta's like, you know what? No, we're going to get... Four Gorbis into play. Forbis, if you will. I, I'm sorry, I won't. <laughs> I, I, I apologize. We're eight, just going to blow out up the Gorbis. Oh, a warp point out of, out of at TFU. So it makes you think they do not have the, uh, the ability to attack with the Ditto. Well, they had an energy. They must not have had the second energy. They, yeah, they must have only had the one. But now that Swapper's probably going down. Yes, and, and in addition to that, that was a missed opportunity to take four Psychic Energy off the board. Yeah, now it's going to go down to a two-energy Mystic Water instead of a four-energy Mystic Water. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is officially in the scary territory for Tfue. Scary, if you will. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know what got into me today. <laughs> this is great. Not if you're Tfue, I think. I think if you're Tfue, this is very bad. This is less great if you're TP, certainly. Oh, Look. please, 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 please. For Gorbis, we got there! 
For Abyss. For Abyss. For Abyss. Oh, I need an air horn right now. Everyone in the chat. We are a professional stream. <laughs> we we compose ourselves very seriously here at the War of 04. Yes. Remember, I am. I, I we're both trying out very, very for. Seriously. Yeah, we're, we're both trying out for these TPCI streams right now. So any any TPCI reps watching this, this is the type of energy and whimsy that we bring to your broadcasts. As long as the cards are 20 years old. I don't I, well, I play TPC, standard, but uh eh. TPC, I, I am I am up to speed on standard. Let me tell you. I can I can bring the fire in standard. See, the the reason why I, 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 can, I can bring the standard with a little bit of that historical flair. You've actually contributed to to their broadcast before, right? I have. I, I wrote the I wrote one of the um one of the Pokemon history videos that they play on stream. Yeah, so if you're ever watching those those history of Pokemon things they do in between matches, those are Kara's words. And it's only fitting. Anyway. This game has an oral history we've been passing down for so long. And it's all because of you. You know, I would love to sing my praises, but um we are we are seeing a ditto stun needle agorbis. And it worked. And it worked. Now, Tifu is in the danger zone, but bought some time there. Yeah, I, I need to take a second to count the psychic energies on board to see if a Glalie's getting one shot. I'm guessing it will be. 1, 2, oh, 3, yeah. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, so I think this is checkmate. If Gorbis can run through Glalie, then... I, I don't see what, what Glalie can do at this point. They're so far behind on prizes. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Hmm. Going for the Stun Needle still? Okay. Silly but surely. I don't know if Canton plays any switching cards. To be honest, I, I don't remember if we've seen them play any yet today. Yeah, I, I don't know. Of course, they don't need to. They can just say... He'll dance. And Ditto goes down. One prize left. It's looking like back is against the wall. Tfue goes for the desperation bubble. It's not enough as Canton Magic Hand has defeated the secret deck and has punched their ticket into the finals of the War of 04 with Gardevoir Gorvis, the first deck to make the finals.